Good morning, everybody. Not Welcome. Oh, my, I turned my video off. That's so funny. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another episode. What a mess. Another episode of Dropping the Gloves here. Tim Wurzberger, John Scott. We're apart today, Tim, even though we're in the same city. And it feels normal now. It feels better this way, doesn't it? Feels better. I don't know about that. It was fun. It, it was fun being together. And we had a few tweets saying you guys got to get buzzed on the show more often, which I didn't think we were, but maybe that came out a little bit. You think we were? Uh, you might have been not me i have a high tolerance but i don't know I, do, I don't i don't i guess i had two glasses of whiskey but i poured my second one back in the bottle the first one was pretty big i poured you on you're like no 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 i need more <laughs> well he poured me like a, a pinky fingers worth of of crown shots royal worth. i gave you a shot's worth i am getting older now where I, I don't mind i used to just despise it the taste of liquor but i like it especially that crown royal deluxe it's delicious. But uh, me and my friends, when Anchorman came out, everybody, scotch, scotch, scotch. I love scotch. We went out one night and we all wore suits. We were probably 19, like just, just immature. We all wore terrible suits and we went downtown. Me, I'm trying to think of my friends, Andy Huckluck, Joe Oliver, Justin Moyer, the, the St. Catharines crew, Chuck Durant, all ordered scotch. That's all we ordered. And it Scott, was Scott, Scott, down in my belly. Awful. It's so horrendous. I think we ordered one round of scotch. Nobody, I think I downed mine just like a shot. And it was disgusting. I haven't had scotch since. I don't even know what scotch is. I don't it's even just, know. It's whiskey made in Scotland. It's like a specific is that what it is? blend. Yeah. Because I had when I was in Australia, Lagavulin, and I really enjoyed it. It's like a smoked, it had a really smoky taste and flavor. My, that might be scotch. It was delicious. Maybe we just ordered garbage. Mind you, our budget was probably $3 per glass. So we weren't, you know, it was, it was bottom shelf stuff. Back in the day, you know when things are simple? They were. Is, isn't it nice to, to think back? I always look at my kids. I'm like, you have no, no worries in the world. Just enjoy it. Because then when you get older, it's just like life comes at you fast. I actually got a re reprieve from it just because of hockey, where I had no responsibilities until basically I hit 35 and I retired. And I was like, holy cow, I got to like, I got to provide for you people. I can't just play hockey and get paid tons of money. This is strange. I asked you this once, but like when you were 27, do you think you would have known how much a gallon of milk cost? No, not not one iota. And it's funny now. Now I, I work and I'm like, gosh, I got to like, I got to buy lunch today. And I was going to now Tim and I are going for lunch. But before the fact, I didn't bring a lunch today. So it's almost, you know, providential, Tim, you asked me for lunch. But I was like, gosh, I got to buy lunch. And I get two for one subs at Subway for like $11. So it's not a lot of money, but I'm just like, man, it's annoying. Can't bring leftovers. But now Tim and I are going out for lunch. So it's a win win. I can buy my own lunch. I'll buy you lunch, John. You do owe me a bunch of breakfasts. That's funny. You do. All right. Maybe maybe we'll make that happen. All right. Moving on. This episode, before we get into it, is brought to you by our friends at Give Better. They got a lot of good feedback, Tim. Our first week out, a couple of weeks, we got a lot of people signing on to Give Better. Great feedback. Not everybody signing on. I know all you guys gamble on Sportsbook Online. Go to Give Better. Check it out. We have our own little app and app that you click on and whatever what do they call links, Tim. They're they're all over the place. Check it out. Take a quick survey. And here's the big thing now. We did the rollout. I feel bad for the people who did it early. Maybe they could do it again. Have another email address. Because now, if you sign up now using our link, you'll be entered with the chance to win two tickets to an NHL game of your choice. That means if you're in Dallas, if you're in New York, if you're in Chicago, if you're in Toronto, where tickets are like $150 a pop, any venue, you get a chance to win two tickets to a game of your choice. You can find the link everywhere. Go to Give Better. It's social, responsible sports gambling brought to you by Give Better. It's a great company. And now you have a chance to win two tickets. Just... No ties. Just go and sign up. You don't have to give them your credit card info or anything. You just go to the link, give them your email address, take a quick survey, and you have a chance to win two tickets. We'll announce the winner, what, in a week or two weeks, Tim? I don't know. We'll leave that up to them. But it's givebetter.app slash DTG. DTG for dropping the gloves. Givebetter.app slash DTG. Take a quick survey. You might win two tickets. Take a date. 
That's what I would do well, if they, I wanted. Can, can they find a link in our um, social stuff? Oh yeah, it's in our it's in our link tree. It's on all our social channels. We'll post it out. But check it out. We've had a few people sign up for that already, so don't miss out on that. Two tickets. That's a, that's what it is. That's a big deal. Two tickets to any game too, so you can pick. And mind you, it's not like you can't pick the last game of the season. It's it's all. Well, I guess you could. Who knows? I'm Who thinking knows? Bruins. Bruins versus Blackhawks. That's not going to happen again. We'll see. I missed my chance on that one. It is two tickets. So anyways, check it out. What else are we talking about? We had an interesting tweet. And I, I try to read all the tweets as I'm scratching my forehead. Somebody, what was this guy's name, Tim? Before, you've always put this on the agenda. We got we to gotta shout the guy out. Someone said, man, does John have Botox? Guy's forehead does not have a wrinkle on it at all. Seriously, he 100% gets Botox. Um, No, I've never had Botox. Have you, Tim? Never had Botox. Never had Botox. No. Well, we did do some investigating, and I guess on the new Zoom, you can touch up your face, and it automatically turns on. So my face was touched up, and I apologize. So now I turned it off. I don't know. Is that a compliment when someone says, you got Botox? If you is it John insult? got Botox, you don't know him very well, right? This guy, he's uh, he's not running a comb through his hair, let alone injecting himself with something. I can honestly tell you the last time I physically ran a comb or a brush through my hair, it was 1990s. <laughs> yeah. Like I did, I did it in high school just because I used to hairspray my hair and I used to oof up, up she goes and like just a can of hairspray to make it stick. I had the wave, the Zach Morris wave. Uh, and did I did that. that. Oh yeah, I did. And um, I would do it every morning. And then I went through the phase of slicking it right back, but I used a comb religiously every day. But every once I hit, college that was it like seriously the 90s was the last time i ran a comb through my hair my kids do it all the time you brush your hair but anyways that was that tweet was from granelli toss toss a salad is that how you say his name yeah yeah granelli granelli tosses salad granelli's the uh he's the producer for chicklets so i don't know he must be a fan of both of our shows hopefully ours more he must be a chef or something. He's big salads. Um, okay, moving on. Another thing, I got a funny story. So we have, it's winter time here. We're going to get to hockey soon. I'm sorry. It's just been a while since we've done like an episode like this. We did the in-person thing. It's a little uncomfortable. Um, okay. My my house, obviously, I don't know if you know, it sat vacant for, vacant for 25 years before I moved in. I renovated it. So animals have grown accustomed to just making it their winter house mice and so every time it cools down we always get this onslaught this rush of mice that come into the house and we fight it we fight it we fight it. every year i'm killing them haven't seen any in the house but they're in the the ceilings they're in the walls they're in the walls so this year i did a little research and i found out you can soak cotton balls in pure natural 100 percent peppermint oil and this peppermint oil is like gold it's very expensive so i paid like 30 dollars for a little six ounce jar of it and i got it yesterday and i did it when my my kids and wife weren't there so i soaked all the cotton balls and I, i'm not smart you know i don't wear gloves and so i'm just opening the can and it's spilling everywhere and i don't realize how potent it is and so i'm throwing the cotton balls up in the attic life's good i'm touching my face i go use the restroom and i'm using the restroom with my hands my whole body starts to tingle like crazy. And Tim, it was the, the most terrible feeling. I thought I thought I was in serious trouble because it's. I'm like, oh, it's peppermint oil. It's not a big deal. I still, my hands are still tingling. And I put it on yesterday afternoon. And you put it on sensitive spots. It's scary stuff. So like my face was on fire. Other body parts were on fire. It was, they should put a disclaimer on that bottle. It probably is. I'm sure you didn't read it. Did it um did it get any rash or anything like that? Did it get red anywhere? <laughs> no. No, I didn't do a big inspection, but no, no rash. But uh yeah, just be careful. It's very uh it's dangerous stuff. And the mice apparently it worked. I didn't hear any I would hear chewing at night the last week. You would hear them gnawing on acorns, and so I'd bang on the ceiling and the mice would go skittering everywhere, but Oof, peppermint oil. Be careful. 
It's very, very dangerous stuff. And they say if you dilute it with water, you can spray it around your house and it'll scare away all kinds of animals. So does it kill them or scare them away or what? It scares them away. It doesn't kill them. I wish it killed them. But it's apparently they hate the smell and the smell lasts for a long time. So now my house smells like like peppermint. Could be worse. There could be worse could, things. There could be worse. Anyways, moving on. What, let's, let's start talking to hockey, Tim. What's going on in the NHL these days? Well, the big report this last couple of days with the NHL is officially notified teams that it wants to hear their opinions on quote unquote decentralization of the draft, which is going to have teams stay at home while the prospects attend their the, the draft the same way they do in the NFL and the NBA. So it's not going to be this big on stage thing, I guess. It's not going to be I don't know if this includes like the combine and all that, too. Um, if there's a desire for change, it wouldn't happen until 2024 at the very earliest, the next draft, which I think is more likely 2025. Um, I don't understand this. Is this a good thing? Like, what would be the reason that they would explore that? It has to be a cost thing. I'm sure the draft is very, very <clears throat> expensive and maybe they don't see the ROI that they're hoping for. Or what, what do you how do you react to this? Yeah, I think it's the it all boils down to money. I think they looked at the NFL and what they do and how they have made it such a big event. Like there's so much stuff surrounding the NFL, but I don't know. I, I don't, I don't like this. I think it's, it's a special day for kids who get drafted to be able to go down, put the Jersey on, meet the GM, the coach, take your pictures, especially for the first round. It, it's almost like a rite of passage, right? You get drafted. This is it. It's a big day for you. It would kind of stink if all these teams are in separate locations and you're just sitting in your living room and it's not even televised. I don't know. I I think it's a bad idea. I know they would save a few bucks. Maybe the teams wouldn't have to relocate, get hotel rooms, bring computers, bring the whole the whole group of people that you need to get drafted or to draft people and I don't know. Do, do you watch the draft when when it's on live or do you just like the the replays cuz I've never watched it live, I'll be honest. I've watched it live <clears throat> two or three times, mostly when the Bruins had the when the Tyler Sagan and then they had the seventh pick and got Dougie Hamilton. Like I watched those years, but no, I don't. But again, if my team was bad and those drafts were super important, I probably would. Yeah, it's kind of a catch-22 because no one watches it because, I don't know, I think it's a, it's a foregone conclusion usually who you're going to pick in the first 10, and nobody really cares about picks 10+. plus. It's not like the NFL where these guys are coming in and you're a late-round, first-round pick and you're making an, an immediate impact. Hockey, it takes a few years for you to make the make the actual league, but I don't know. I think it's neat to see the first round pick, first overall pick at the jersey. You saw the Shane Wright drama a couple of years ago when he wasn't picking. He sits there and he sits there. I think that's fun. It's not like the football where they're back in the green room. Remember Aaron Rodgers just did, uh, sitting there? He didn't get picked. He didn't get picked. He was sitting there. And it was great drama. Hockey, it's just not the same thing. I don't think people have the interest in hockey like football, but... It would be a shame if they if they let it go. Well, this really would. Now it's a bigger conversation online. And I don't know if there's any credence to it, but people are talking like, do you abolish the draft altogether? There's certain leagues over in Europe where you can just let players sign where they want to sign. And that's ridiculous. There's limitations on like the amount of contracts and all this stuff. You can't just have like the big market teams just snatch up every young college player and prospect and stuff. But the idea is that like 18 year olds shouldn't be controlled and told where they can work and where they can go. Uh, uh, you didn't know? No, dumb. Why shouldn't they be told what to do? Because they're 18? It's the, I mean, other than sports and maybe the military, it's the only place where you have no control over where you work. Oh, they have full control. They can work in the NHL if they want, or they can work anywhere else. They don't have to play in the NHL. No one's put a gun to their head and said, you have to play here for this team. They choose to play in the NHL. They choose to enter the draft. People are so stupid. That stuff drives me nuts. It's just like, oh, they should have their own choice. It's a choice to play in the NHL. I could have left whenever I wanted to. I enjoyed it. Are you? Is that actually a thing? Are you just pulling my chain to get me worked up here? No, it was a big conversation the last couple of days on Twitter. Um, and I guess I don't follow that closely, but I guess some of the European soccer leagues, maybe even hockey leagues work similarly where the players, again, there's restrictions. You can't just sign every every guy you want. But then people are like, well, Winnipeg's never going to sign anybody good. Right. You know, like Calgary, like who's unless you're a hometown yeah. boy and you want to play there. So everyone's. Yeah, I, I so, it's so dumb. Such a such a dumb idea. They should never even entertain it. It shouldn't even be a conversation. If you think that's a good thing, you're absolutely crazy. If I gave my kids choices <laughs> to do things, it would be absolute chaos. 
it would be absolute just insanity at my house. What does everybody want for lunch today? It would take an hour and a half just to get their order. <laughs> yeah. You need you need to set boundaries, and that's what it is. The draft is there for a reason. If you don't want to enter the draft, you have your three years. If you don't want to, if you don't like who you get picked, they have some flexibility. You don't sign with the team, then you become a free agent three years later, and you can sign with whoever you want. There's differences between your seven year old daughters and these eighteen year old adults, isn't there? I mean, no, like... there really isn't. <laughs> I know you think that it's yeah. all the same. They have a choice to enter the draft. They have a choice to play hockey. They don't need to play hockey. It's a luxury for them to be in the NHL. The players don't want that. This is just some lunatic bringing this up and like, oh, equality for all. Everybody should have their own choices. I think they get confused on what choices are, what freedom is. You have a choice to enter the draft. You don't have to enter the draft. This is the system that we work under. I, I don't go and work for McDonald's and say, you know what? I want to be the owner today. I don't want to, I don't want to make fries. I want to be the general manager. It's not how it works. So this was brought up by a woman named Rachel Dory, who says alternatively hashtag abolish the draft. Let kids decide where they want to play within cap constraints. Teams can only offer ELCs. This would entirely eliminate tanking and force teams to offer players opportunity to make their clubs attractive destinations. And she said, okay, it works in Europe. Most importantly, I don't like that I don't like that 18 year olds or really anyone are told who their employer is oh my gosh. and where they can live slash play. Players should get to choose earlier, so then lower the UFA age to 24. She is a writer for hockey news and she works for M- Bet MGM. Get her on the show. Ask her to come on the show. <laughs> she I, I'd love to debate her. I would love to see what her profile looks like. I could probably ping a couple things that are in there too. <laughs> Yeah, we're not going to go down down that road. So dumb. It's just like people always have to find something to be upset about. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, that's not you. You're you're never mad about anything. I react to things that are just ridiculous. This is insane. You know, it's not ridiculous. Crown Royal and our new segment on our show called The Generous Guy presented by Crown Royal. This week, in my opinion, the generous guy is Tim Stutzel. Or as Tim likes to say it, Tim Stutzle. He had three assists. Stutzle. I even butchered it the the second time. Anyways, he is the generous guy brought to you by Crown Royal last night. He had three assists, Tim. An Ottawa 6-1 win over the Washington Capitals. There's more than one way to be generous, everybody. But as a hockey player, it doesn't get more generous than dishing out nasty sauce passes and pucks for your teammate to bury it. Way to go, Tim. You are the generous guy of the week. Generosity lives in the small things. It doesn't need money or an audience or even acknowledgement. It just needs a few good people. Crown Royal, everybody. Crown everything. It doesn't take a million dollar donation or name on a hospital wing. This. This is where generosity lives. All right, moving on. It's week one in the books, Tim. There's good things. There's bad things. A lot of surprises. I'll be honest. Teams that are over exceeding expectations, teams that are coming out a little sluggish. We talked Derek Stepan, what was it, a week ago, a week and a half ago, I think he said they didn't care about the regular season. They just wanted to get to the dance. And you see this year to year where the veteran teams who have been to the playoffs for the last four, five, six years, they usually start out a little slow. They know when to turn it on. They know what's important. They're not going to waste their energy. Maybe going through camp and ramping it up so you're in peak shape when the season starts. They like to ramp it up, maybe get there midway through the season. Anyways, all that aside, we're going to do buy or sell. Do you buy the start? Do you sell the start? Do you believe it's going to be a trend to continue? Or do you think it's just a flash in the plan? Much like the Buffalo Sabres of years past, where they start out absolutely on fuego, and then they just tank or the Vancouver Canucks where they start out in the bucket and all of a sudden they're the best team in the league near the end of the season and they're playing catch up. So we're going to go through some teams and we'll, we'll do a little buy or sell Tim. What do you think? Let's go for it. Where do you want to start? Let's start with the Ottawa Senators. We just mentioned them. Tim Stutzley, three assists, a generous guy of the day brought to you by Crown Royal. They're three and one. They're playing fantastic right now. They're beating good teams. They're first place in the Atlantic division. They're scoring goals. They're having fun. Vladimir Tarasenko's playing good. 
They beat the Flyers five to two. They beat the Lightning five to two. They beat the Capitals six to one. So it's not like they're winning two to one games. Their offense is producing. They lost the first game of the season five to three. But do you buy this team? Do you think they have answered all the questions and now they are a legitimate contender in this tough Eastern Conference? I'm buying it. Yeah, we looked at their roster before the season. They have, they're so stacked. Their <clears throat> offense is so stacked. They have probably a top six that can match up with just about anybody. They've got depth now. They've got scoring wingers. They've got they got Josh Norris back. He scored last night. They got this kid. Shabbat obviously is, is is shutting down their lines. But Sanderson, we uh, a few weeks ago we had Brady Kachuk on. He said he's the most underrated player in the league. He turned 21 in July. He has five points in four games. He's a defenseman. He's doing everything. I'm buying this team. The, the, the question is still the goaltending. We'll see how that shakes out throughout the course of the year. But three and one, this is a winning team. I'm buying it. Yeah, I agree with you. The goaltending is the question. Corpusalo started the first game, got absolutely shelled. Forsberg has come in and played pretty good. And when you're putting up five or six goals, it doesn't matter who's in now. You're going to win those games. And when your third line, Tim, is centered by Josh Norris with Drake Batherson and Dominic Kubalik, who they picked up this offseason, it's a pretty deadly lineup. This, this is a good team. This is a very good team top to bottom. I'm interested to see how they fare against some high-end talent in the Eastern Conference. They haven't played the Bruins, the Leafs, those types of teams. They lost to the Hurricanes the first game of the season. So it's still early. I'm not quite <clears throat> sold on them yet, but I like where they're headed. I, I think this is a good sign for this team moving forward. All right, who else are we talking about? Yeah, the Detroit Red Wings are also 3-1. and one. You buying or selling this one? Mm, I'm selling. That means I don't think this will last. I, I think it's it's a good story. They're absolutely on fire offensive wise, much much like the um, Ottawa Senators. Alex DeBrinket's playing fantastic. What did he have? Eight points, Tim, in four games. He he's playing fantastic. He's doing everything the Red Wings want him to do. But they beat the Penguins, who haven't come off to a good start. They've been a little sluggish. They beat the Blue Jackets who are just atrocious and they beat the lightning who we'll get to in a second. They're not, they're not having a great start. So I, I don't want to drink the Kool-Aid just yet on the red wings, but it is a good start. Cause I was one of their biggest critics this off season. The eyes are playing, not working to bring. It's not going to produce all of a sudden four games in to bring is the best player in the league. And the red wings are first place in the Atlantic. So we'll see. We'll, we'll we'll give it a month and then we'll circle back on the Detroit Red Wings. But I'm not ready to just jump all in on the bandwagon just yet. What do you think? No, nah, you said it. I'm selling. I don't buy into this. I do like to bring it eight points. It leads the leads the league in um in second in goals and leads the league in points. But no, I'm not buying this. No. Chance. So what's the difference between the Red Wings and the Senators? <clears throat> they they both played fairly similar competition. Nothing too crazy. They lost their first game. The Red Wings lost to the Devils. And the Senators lost to the Hurricanes, two good teams. Then they went on to beat kind of subpar competition. Is it just who's on the roster, obviously? What's the difference? They're both three yeah. and one. No, it's the roster. You look at the Senators roster, you're like, yeah, yeah, this, this makes sense. You look at the Red Wings roster, it's like, wow, good for them. I was, <laughs> you know, it's like, wow. Wow. Um, Good for no, you guys. I, I agree. All right, let's move on to a team that's maybe not starting out so well, a team that has Stanley Cup aspirations, the Tampa Bay Lightning. They started off 1-2-1. Two, and one. They're playing terrible. Their goaltenders aren't showing up. They're giving up a ton of goals, Tim. They've had 17 goals against in four games. For a team like that, who prides themselves in a 200-foot game, Andre Vasilevsky, a veteran decor led by Sergachev and Hedman and Chernak, What's going on in Tampa Bay? Do you see them? And I know it's early. It's four games in. I, I know we're maybe putting the cart up in front of the horse here, but is this a trend that's going to continue these guys? Because usually you pride yourself on defense the first month. The offense isn't clicking. You take some time to build that camaraderie and chemistry, but you can kind of hang your hat on your defense. You look at this lightning team, Tim, four goals against per game. If 4.25, that's very unlightning esque what do you think this team is headed? I think they're going to be okay. The goaltending is the thing. They have Jonas Johansson, who was supposed to be like their guy replacing. Obviously, Vasilevsky's out for around two months, I think it was. So mm -hmm. he's 1-1-1, one, one, and one, um, 3.7 goals against, mm -hmm. 893 save percentage. Matt Tompkins started the other game, 4.1 goals against, 892 Woof. save percentage. So they're just not getting mm -hmm. good goaltending. Uh, the offense is okay. You know, the, the good players are the good players, but I, I still, I'm not worried about this team. So I'm not, I'm not buying that this is going to continue, but you have to like, the, the red flag is up. 
you know, they're on notice because this is this is going to be an issue for them if they don't figure it out quick. I, I'm selling this team. I, th- I I did not pick them to make the playoffs, if I remember correctly. I think they're going to miss the playoffs along with the Boston Bruins. They might squeak in on a wild card, I think I said. But yeah, they've lost to the Red Wings, the Senators, and the Sabres. Those are three t- teams that have improved this offseason. I don't think Tampa Bay got any better. I think they're getting older. I I forgot Vasilevsky was out. I didn't forget. I just didn't mention. But yeah, him being out is a huge deal. If they don't figure things out quick, they're going to be staring at like a 10-point deficit when we circle into Christmas. This is a big deal for them to lose this early. I know it's only two games. It's the teams are losing two that's a bigger deal. Those three teams are chomping at the bit to pass these guys, pass the Bruins, get into a playoff position, and they're crazy motivated to do that this year. We saw the Sabres bring in big guys, re-sign their young guys. The Senators had a big offseason bringing in Tarasenko. Everybody's doubting the Red Wings. Is Debrinket, are these guys going to gel? They're listening to this podcast, and they're fired up. So I'm telling you, Tim, Tampa Bay is going to be in trouble this season. All right, one more. The Seattle Kraken. Last year's Cinderella story make it all the way to the Western Conference Finals, upsetting Colorado in the first round. They haven't had a win yet this year, Tim. They're 0-3-1. and one. What is going on in Seattle? And are you buying this slow start? No, I'm not buying this slow start. I, I This is a tough one because they surprised everybody last year. I don't think most people expected them to be a playoff team, let alone winning a series. And so they kind of, I don't want to say they overachieved, but they might have, right? We don't know how good they really were, but they're not this bad either. They're not an 3 and one. They're not gonna, you know, they're gonna win some games. They had their roster's good, their goalies are good, their defense is good. They just signed um Vince Dunn to a big contract. He's a stud. You know they're gonna put up some points. So this is they're not this bad. So I'm selling the slow start. I don't buy into it. No, I, I'm buying it. They're they're I think they are absolutely done. I think well, last year was a cute story. They were uh, they're a group of really good second line players. I don't think they have a first line player in the mix. Maybe Matty Beignets once he rounds into form, but I don't think they have that superstar on this team, let alone a star. They're all just really good at hockey. You know, they got Eberle, McCann, Jaden Schwartz has had a, a good story there. There's no guy that I'm scared of. I think last year they caught people off guard. They, they, they will not make the playoffs this year. They lost all Western Conference teams Vegas, Predators, Blues, Avalanche. They're done. They're absolutely done this year. I don't think they'll come last. Don't get me wrong. But this this slow of a start, they ain't making the playoffs. I'm calling them. Four games in. That's it. Start the rebuild. That's enough. John, come on. They're not this bad. You know they're they, not this bad. Tim, they played ahead of their skis last year. They got They got lucky in a lot of games. I think they surprised a lot of people. They worked hard as a team. I think people know who the Seattle Kraken are now. And, and they're not going to surprise anybody they're done they're done they have the same team as they did last year they didn't bring anybody in last year they were projected to miss the playoffs and they surprised everybody this year all of a sudden because they got lucky last year they have a different team i don't think so this this team they are who we think they are they're a good team that just doesn't have much talent that's it that's it tim We'll find out. Let's do a couple more quick ones. Brady Shea currently leads all defensemen in in points with six. Are you buying or selling that? Um, I'm absolutely selling that. There's no way this is something he's going to maintain. It's great. Carolina Hurricanes have played four games, so they've had to jump on a lot of the other teams. But the guy's not known for scoring this many points in his career. But it's it's a good story. Is this because... He's getting first power play time. I, I don't even know how he's getting all these points, but I don't know. What's what's his career high? His career high is 39 a couple of years ago. This ain't going to last. He's got one goal, five assists, six points, only one power play point. So it's a good start for him, but Tim, stop. Was this even a real one? Yeah, okay. Last one, and you're going to love this one. There have been three games for the uh, Washington Capitals. Alex Ovechkin has zero goals, one assist, buy or sell. I think you know my answer. I, I purposely did the George Costanza for our bold predictions at the beginning of the year. The opposite's going to come true, so I picked him to get 62 goals. I firmly believe he's going to have a hard time hitting 25-30, and I really believe that. So I'm going to I'm going to buy this. I think he will find his goal scoring rhythm. He will put some points on the board, but I think I don't think I know. He's 39 years old. 
he, he's not getting any younger. It's hard to compete in this game when you're 25 year old at the top of your prime, like physical peak. It's hard. This guy's almost 40. You don't think that's going to wear on you? You don't think that's going to play a factor? Father Time has never lost a battle. He's hit the wall. I'm calling it. He'll get 25 30 this year. That's it. <laughs> yeah. I I think you're wrong. I think he's still going to put up some goals. This, uh, How many, though? How many? Um, I think he could still reach 40. Okay. I think 62 was a silly number, but I think he could still be a 40 goal scorer, especially because, like you said, and this is what you explained when you made that prediction. And maybe you were BSing us, but like they're not going to win a lot of games, like you said. They're not going to have a lot to play for other than getting this guy his goals. You know what I mean? And so he's going to get double shifts. He's going to play at the end of the games. He's going to get those empty netters. He's going to get the looks on the power play. I think he's still going to, he's still got his store in touch. And and this came up years ago. This is obviously went back when he was in, in his prime, but he once went the first four games of the season without scoring and still led the league in goals that year. So he, I know he's older. I think he's going to be okay. I don't think I'm, I'm not buying this slow start for him. This team has played three games and they've scored three goals. This team is in trouble. They are not the same team they were even last year. Backstrom doesn't look the same. Kuznetsov doesn't look the same. He's playing with Dylan Strom on the first line with Tom Wilson. So it's it's not like he's playing with a disher and all he has to do is set up shop at the top of the circle. Ovi's being asked to do maybe a little bit more because he's not playing with the talent he's used to. This team is old. It, it's caught up with them. It caught up with them two years ago and they didn't do anything different. They haven't brought anybody in of note to change the makeup of this team. This is the same team. If you look at the roster, it's the same team that was around five years ago. Nothing has changed. The defense is still porous. They got Rasmus Sandin from the Leafs. That was a good move. Other than that, like they still have Van Riemsdyk. They still have Jensen. They still have Carlson. It's the same guys, Tim. And they're getting older. I don't I don't know why people think they're all of a sudden gonna gonna be better. I don't know. Oshi, Kuznetsov, Backstrom, Wilson, Ovechkin. It, it's the same team. I don't know. He ain't he ain't getting 30. I'm willing to bet. Go to get better. He ain't getting 30. Do you did you see speaking of Kuznetsov, did you see his shootout goal the other night? Oh, that should be about? illegal. I it drives me nuts. That stuff. It, 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 what do you, do you think it's fair? No, I hate it. I hate it. I don't know. How do you make a rule to combat that though? Do you put a time like a stopwatch on the player? Does, does he have to make some effort to skate towards the net? And then it becomes a shot clock thing. Did he shoot the puck at zero? Did he shoot it at point one? They're going to have to have a replay for that. How do you, how do you make it fair for the goalie? Well, I saw um, a tweet. I think it was from a Capitals beat writer who must know him a little bit. And he goes, basically, knowing what I know about Kuznetsov, he thinks this rule is just as ridiculous as everybody else does, that, that he can do this. And he's poking fun at it, saying, if you're going to let me do it, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to score automatically and win games because of it, because it's a flaw in the system. And screw you guys, basically. Because um, most people are, like, mad at him. But I think he's sort of mocking the system openly. I, I don't know what you do. I think it has to be the timer. Or just say, listen... We all know what this move is. Let's call it's come up with a name for it and say, don't do it. You know what I mean? Like, and just yeah. have the ref make it subjective to their call and, and whatever. So leave it up to the ref's discretion. If they're actually skating in and making a proper move, because it is unstoppable for the goaltender. If he goes in 10 times like that, he's scoring seven goaltender. Basically it's like a soccer goal where the goaltender just guesses and he's diving to one side because you're started- not going to react. Many years ago, like 10 years ago, Kaner did that thing where he came in super slow, stick handled a lot. And that was like, it was kind of a gimmick then, but it was cool because no one had really done that. And then yeah. and then it kind of sort of devolved into what Kuznetsov did, which is way less skill, way more um, automatic probably. And, and way, I don't know, it's just not fun to look, watch. And the yeah. fact that it's deciding games is just <laughs> lame. You watch his stick. He doesn't give any indication of where he's going to shoot. He doesn't close it. He doesn't open it. He just keeps it. He just stick handles, keeps it super flat on a stick. And then he just like (laughs) the goaltender's stuck. He's like, do I go to the left? Do I go to the right? Do I cover my five hole? It's impossible to save. Like you have to guess. But yeah, it's, it's not fun. It's not hockey. I think that's, that's the important thing. We want to decide the game with a hockey play. A, A breakaway is a hockey play. 
that is not a hockey play. I don't know what that is, but yeah, good for Kuznetsov. He's just playing within the rules. Good for him. All right, Tim, moving on. What are we doing now? We're going to start with our DoorDash quick hits. When you need quick hits, you come to us. When you need quick delivery, you go to DoorDash. The promo code is NATION25, all capitals, NATION25. You get 25% off your first order and free delivery. It's live right now in Canada, coming soon to the States. I know a lot of our listeners there were coming soon for you guys, but if you're in Canada, you can use this promo code. I'm traveling this week, John. I don't I have time to stop at a lot of restaurants. I'm checking into a hotel tomorrow night. I'm going to get DoorDash. I'm thinking pizza, yeah. maybe Thai food. I really like Thai, but I'm going to use that promo code when I go to Canada. Can't use it yet, but Nation25 for all Canadian listeners. Check it out. Our U.S. listeners get just get shafted. <laughs> I know. They really do. They can't do Give Better yet. They can't use DoorDash. It's good. We're going to get there, our USA, and most of our listeners are in the States, too, which is very comical. But yes, use yeah. Nation 25, 25% off free delivery. It's We love DoorDash. They're back with us. They're not using our usual promo code, GlovesDD, but nah, what are you going to do? It's Nation 25, right, Tim? Ding dong. Right. Yeah. Ding dong. So What's next? some tough injury news coming around the league. Let's start with Kirby Doc. We mentioned it the other day. Mm. He's hurt. Confirmed his season's over. <laughs> ACL, MCL, just the whole knee. I, I was there. I watched the hit. I was calling that game live. Poor guy. It didn't even look like that serious of a hit. Tenorti picks him up, throws him in the bench. His leg must have just got caught on the corner of the boards and just exploded. Oh, it's it's sad to see. He's, he's had injury issues his whole career. Yeah, and this stuff is just out of his control. And it's not like he's not injury prone. You know what I mean? Like these are fluke accidents that would hurt anyone. It's just bad luck. You know, some guys are just get hurt more often because of their bodies and whatever. Some guys get hurt just because of bad luck. And this is, this is the latter. You, you would be the former. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I got uh, one of my first home games got checked and dislocated my shoulder just because of, yeah, brutal. You didn't Uh, even get touched one time when you got hurt. You just fell down. Mm, no not, not yeah um, you did yeah so tough tough break for kirby there's a picture of him um <clears throat> watching the canadians practice i think they kind of made it seem like they're all worried about him because he's just so down and so upset obviously and he's just trying to stay with the team keep his spirits up and just a disappointment because he had such a great year last year you know he loves the city and he loves being part of that team he's got great chemistry with, with uh caulfield and suzuki caulfield scoring in bunches already too but too bad for him. Too it's bad. a big deal. You work all summer long. You're gearing up for the season and you're so excited. You're anticipating. You get hurt in the second game of the year. Like, that's just, and you, that stings. And Kirby, like, he feels just his story, what what kind of didn't work in Chicago. And then he's, you feel like he's about to, like, okay, this is the year. Everything's going to come together finally. I'm healthy. I'm in the right situation. Like, I'm going to show the hockey world who I am. And then he gets right. Home. Yeah. It's brutal. <clears throat> Yeah, it's a tough break for the kid. Hopefully he bounces back next year. But yeah, it's um, he's still young. He's only 22, but he's had two major injuries so far. Hopefully he bounces back. All right. What else we talk about here? Another one. Gabe Velarde is out four to six <laughs> weeks with a sprained MCL. The MCL again um, for Winnipeg. Too bad for them. Yeah, that's a that's a big one. Winnipeg obviously did not make the big changes this offseason like I wanted them to. They signed Shifley. They re-signed Hellebuck. Now Velarde's out. Now they're in big trouble. He was a huge part of this team. He was going to be a big part of the top six. So, I don't know. You, you bump Cole Perfetti up, the young kid, their young first-round draft pick. He's going to get some time with uh, Ehlers and Domestikov on that second line. It's 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 a tough break. The, this is not what the <laughs> Winnipeg Jets needed. Like, imagine if they go in the tank and they just stink this year and they re-sign Shifley and Hellebuck. You have no money. You have no space. You have nobody who you can move at the deadline. And this is your lineup. You were the Washington Capitals without the Stanley Cup. That's what you are. You have wow. all these guys tied into long-term contracts who are good, but they're not young anymore. You're going to have Connor, Shifley, Ehlers, Lowry, Morrissey, and not a cup to show for it. At least Ovi, when he retires, he's going to have a ring on his finger and his name in the rafters. The Jets will have absolutely nothing to show for their, their years in Winnipeg. Good for them. Wow. It's it's a tough tough break for Velarde. That's a good that's a good analogy though. All right, last one. I I, I saw something cool. Jordan Eberle fought uh, Kyle O'Connor last night, 
kind of a retribution from the playoff round last year where Everly hit um, Andrew Cogliano, knocked him out. Everly played game seven, played great. The Avalanche thought he should have been suspended. It was a pretty dirty hit. Anyways, Everly, I love this. He answered the bell. He fought O'Connor. It was a good scrap. Two little flyweights going at it. What are your thoughts on this? Do you like a, a calendar year retribution for a hit that happened last year, Tim, last season? Is that okay with you? It is, yeah. And so uh, our friends at Hockey Fights posted this, and they post a lot of hits, and they post a lot of fights. And I saw Eberle's name come up on the timeline. I assumed it was a hit they were posting. Like, he either got hit or he hit somebody, which even, even that he doesn't do a lot. But the fact that he dropped the mitts and, and, and lined up with Logan O'Connor, I think. Um, yes, excuse yeah, me, Logan. Uh, <laughs> yeah, good for him. I don't know how many career fights he has. Not many. And, and I think it's totally okay, because you're talking about the playoffs last year. So it's it's the following season, but it's like, one hockey game later you know what i mean in terms of matchup so i think it's fine what do you what do you think i think it's good i think it's it's nice for everybody to answer the bell so what why wouldn't cogliano fight him though uh i don't know concussion issues maybe where it will get knocked in the head yeah i don't does that conversation happen in the room before the game yeah probably they're on the same line o'connor probably said i'll take care of it it was for a shift so Mm -hmm. Yeah, good for yeah. Everly for answering the bell. I, th- I don't think a lot of guys would have said yes in that situation. Everly's been around the league for, right, 15, 16 years. He's a vet. He's not that old, but yeah, he's been around for probably... You don't think he's been around that long? I think his debut, I'm going to guess, was probably 2011 is, or 12 when he started. So 10... I, I feel like he was earlier than that. I he, don't know. He's, a, he's an old guy. Let's, let's find out real quick. Bear with me, everybody. I'm searching up the Seattle crack and... We're going to get to vamp. You're vamping. What does that mean? <laughs> Just fill in the the blank space. I will say I was watching the fight, and you see his his jersey gets pulled over his face, and the refs come in and break it up. And I was like, I was kind of watching it, thinking like, okay, if it was that's the thing where it depends on who's fighting. You know what I mean? Like if, if Ryan Reeves' jersey comes up a little bit, they might let him settle it down and continue the fighting. They might let the big boys work it out, but because it's the guy who doesn't usually fight. And the refs are pretty close to this one because they know they're not going to let it go on forever. They know they're going to break it up. And as soon as that jersey comes up, they come in and and separate the guys. So I thought that was kind of just interesting to watch how the refs handle different guys fighting. And they get more involved when it's people like them that don't usually drop them. Well, I tell you, I've seen a ref jump in a fight when they had no business getting in there with heavyweights and the ref broke his rib. So you, you if you get caught with a punch from a heavyweight and you're not expecting it. Did you, did you break a ref rib, it. John? No, it was Derek Bugard. He jumped into a fight. He was fighting um, a defenseman I played with. Uh, oh, gosh. Was it Scott Hannon or somebody? He was fighting a defenseman, and he dove on the other guy, and Boogie buried him right in the ribs, cracked his rib. You could you see the ref's face. Ugh. If Bugard had punched my ribs, would I just die, do you think? You would not. <laughs> Maybe. Like, uh, yeah. I, I know That's- you're – Pain tolerance level? No, I have a high pain tolerance, but my body doesn't. I um, your body would shut down. That's how Harry Houdini died, right? He got punched trying to like say, and he could absorb a punch and ended up um, causing internal damage and killing him. No kidding. Yeah, for one of his tricks. I didn't know that. Good trick. Um, 2010, 2011. I really, you were right. So, so John, he's I'm played not, 944 games. I'm not smarter. I'm just different. That's all. <clears throat> You're definitely not smarter. That was good, though. 2010-11, he put up Jordan Eberle. Was it him? Nine points that one time when I played no, him versus... Uh... Gagne. Gagne. Gagne, whatever. Um, Eric. Not Eric. Uh, Simone? Sam, Sam Gagne. Sam Gagne. But do you remember Eberle had that... His first goal ever was a, was a beauty highlight real goal. Um, and, and Ryan Whitney assisted on it when he was with the Oilers. There's a funny video about it. It's, it's, it was a beauty. Edmonton's first round picks. If they would ever figure it out, they had so many good players. All right. I think that's it, Tim. Anything else? No, I'm looking forward to lunch. Yeah, we're going to grab lunch in a couple hours here. Anyways, everybody, maybe one day you'll have lunch with Tim and fill those dreams. That'd be nice. All right. Have a good weekend, everybody. We'll talk to you next week. Cheers.